So your topic again has to do with light and shadows and some seasons. So when we talk about light, we're talking that light is made up of tiny little particles. They're called photons, tiny little photons. And as these photons move around, there it makes lots of different kinds of light. So we have natural light that comes from things like the sun, right? The sun gives us lots of light. We also have artificial light though that comes from the light bulbs. If you look up in your classroom, you probably have those big fluorescent lights and all up in your classroom. Okay, so we're going to be looking at how these photons move. Now, light can move as a wave and as a particle. It can move both different ways. You look at that squiggly line. When it has really high squiggles, a lot of squiggles down here, that's where we get your cosmic rays and your x-rays, your gamma rays. When the waves are more spread out, they're more relaxed, that's where we get things like our radio waves and our microwaves. But the light that you see, you see it right in the middle with those visible light number five, the light that we see is part of all of this electromagnetic spectrum. So we have all these particles that are moving through. Again, sometimes they're radio waves, microwaves, infrared. Sometimes they're visible light we can see, ultraviolet light, X-rays, gamma rays, cosmic waves. So just to warn you that it is part of this big electromagnetic spectrum that you're going to study for many years to come. So one funny thing though about our light is, is the light, can it also make heat? We know from the sun, right? Our sun is shining down on our planet. And what happens when it comes down? Our earth is absorbing that light, but it also turns it into heat, changes that into heat. Now on days where it's very cloudy, that those clouds allow the heat to stay in, it insulates us and we can get warmer days. Some of our coldest days are when there's not any clouds in the sky. All right, so again, over here, you see that again, the sunlight is shining. It hits this part of our earth right here. See this part, it's not quite hitting us, is it? So this part is where we have the daylight, but again, all that light energy is being changed into heat energy, okay? So again, sometimes this is why the object can get warmer. Now, when we talk about the sun and natural light, have you ever wondered, how does the sun make light? I mean, it is so bright, we can't even really look at it. It's so bright and it's been burning for hundreds and hundreds of years. Where does that come from? Any of the stars that we look up in the nighttime sky, all the stars produce their light the same way. So it's nuclear reaction that's called fusion. Can you guys say fusion? Fusion. So all of these chemicals that are reacting, it creates this hydrogen atoms and they form with the helium atoms. And then when they do that, they produce a lot of heat and light. So here's a beautiful picture of the sun. You see it's glowing masses there again, has to be taken with a special camera. But now when we talk about light and shadows and seasons, all of these things are connected with this light, the properties of light and how our planet is moving around. Now this little picture is a photon. That's just one photon that's moving and bouncing around. That's pretty cool. So we can see objects when there's light. Can you see the, any objects when it's dark? No, see how it bounces around some? So when we talk about shadows, have you ever wondered what happens? What causes a shadow? If the light is being blocked, then you might get a shadow, okay? So we are going to be looking at this. Now, when we look at our own eyes, your eyes, the way that we see, we take in this picture of the tree. It comes in through many parts of your eye, but then look what happens. The back of your eye, the tree is flipped upside down because of the lens. But your great nerves that you have that control to your brain, your brain figures it out and flips it so you don't see an upside down tree. That's pretty crazy, huh? But that's pretty amazing that you can do that. But we are adapted to see that visible light. Some animals see very different, like a snake sees the heat, they see an infrared, so very different ways. But when it comes to this light and the way the photons move, one thing they can do is reflect. And you guys know this, when you're brushing your teeth in the morning and you look in the mirror, what do you see? Yourself. 
you're seeing a reflection of yourself. So if you look at how this light is moving, it bounces off the mirror and it goes back out. So this is what we call reflection. So anything that has like a shiny surface, you'll be able to get a reflection. Okay, so look at these little babies that are playing with all these mirrors. Let's look at number one. Let's see. Oh no, what happened? He didn't see the he didn't see the mirror, did he? He sees his reflection. He kisses his reflection. And then he goes to try to walk down the hall. And he bumps into another mirror. He didn't see his reflection that time. Let's look at this little baby in number two. This one says, hey, baby. And he knocks himself over. Oh, no. So he looks up, sees his reflection. But I don't think he understands that that's his reflection. He thinks it's another kid to play. Okay, look at this little one. What is she doing? Oh, she's looking and she sees a reflection on this side. She's looking around the back of the mirror to see if the kid's over there. I don't think she quite understands what her reflection is. She's looking, there must be another kid behind there <laughs> playing a game. So that is reflection. All right, now Dr. Blueford's going to tell you a little bit about reflection with this toy dinosaur and these mirrors. Let's look at the reflection of a dinosaur at 90 degree angle. Is it the same on each reflection? Is it what we call a mirror image? So let's take a little detail of one side. And... The other side. So you can even do this at home with your own toys and you're going to do this in the labs with some of your um, parent docents where you're going to be looking at these angles of reflection. Now this is a funny one. Look at, oh, which direction is this little boy running from? I always thought he was running from the back and coming towards us. But what I'm seeing is a reflection. He's actually coming from the side. Now, this is a fun house that's in the San Francisco Bay area. Um, but it is, it's all crazy with all these different reflections. It's hard to tell which direction they're coming from. Okay, now what about animals? Look at these little dogs with the mirrors. Let's look at number one over here, this little white dog. He's looking at a mirror and, and what he's thinking, he's got another friend to play with. He's barking and playing, looking at him in a wagon. He's trying to get this other dog to play. And it's just his reflection. Whereas this little dog, I think he sees his reflection and he gets scared. Look how he jumps away. So reflection is sometimes hard to understand. Now, if you look at these two pictures, can you tell where the land stops and then the water reflection begins? So number one, here we've got our sky with our trees. Here's the coastline right here or the land line. And all of this is water, but you see how the reflection, even the tree, the main part of the trunk there is reflected in the water. Same thing over here. Look at these palm trees. They're reflected in the water. The image is bouncing off. Even the birds that are flying are bounced off. All right, so when you look up in the nighttime sky at night, I mentioned stars earlier, but when you look up in the nighttime sky, you see all these different points of light. The only things that are really giving off light are the stars. When you see something like the big moon, the moon looks bright too, but it's reflecting light. It doesn't have its own light. It can't make its own light with its chemicals. It's just a rocket that's up there, but it's like a mirror and it bounces that light off. It reflects. So just the stars can produce light, but the moon is reflecting it. Okay. So again, the stars are burning up their energy. They're using their chemicals to create energy and heat, light energy and heat energy. So when the sun shines on us, we reflect light just like our moon reflects light. So that's why we're able to see. Now, if you look at this side of the moon, we've got the light shining on it. Can we see this backside? No, because it's in the shadow. The light is not shining on it. The light's missing it. All right. So another part of light that it can do is refract. Can you guys say refract? Refract or refraction. So before with reflection, remember our light went on and bounced back off. 
with refraction, it goes through an object, but it doesn't go straight through. Look how what happens to it when it goes through. It starts to bend. And when it bends, sometimes it bends going through different materials, but that changes what the light looks like. Okay, so as it goes through different materials, it's going to change what it looks like. So look at this picture. Here we've got a glass, and you guys can do this in your classroom or at home. A glass of water, and you put in a straw. Ta-da! We said some magic words, and now we have our straw split in two. It is refracting, and that's because we're looking at the light traveling through the air and traveling through the water. So it makes a difference. All right, Dr. Blueford's going to tell you about this. Refraction can make us see things that isn't really happening. This straw looks like it is bent. It's in the interface between water and atmosphere. Two different mediums that causes light to um, refract. So let's take a look up on the top and we'll notice that we have another perspective. So when you look up on the top, it looks like a regular straw. So there are all kinds of fun magic tricks. You can do the same thing even if you put a penny under a cup or glass and then you pour a little bit of water in, sometimes the penny disappears. So again, this is because the light waves are traveling and they're bending as they go through different material. All right, so look at this funny picture. Okay, look at number one. So look at this, we've got this little kid up here. Look at how big his feet are. Could his feet really be way bigger than his head? Oh my goodness, can that really happen? What's happening here? How would you explain the difference? Remember the light traveling through the air and traveling through the water as a liquid. So when it travels through those different mediums, the air and the liquid, it bends and makes it look funny. So this looks like it's been magnified or blown up down here. Now look over here. If anyone has glasses, you can kind of do this trick too. Sometimes the glasses are made with different lenses. So when the light travels through those lenses, it allows you to focus better and see better. I mean, glasses are made for each person. So what you're seeing him doing is as he holds his lens away from him, what's happening to his eyes? They're getting big. So it just depends again on those lenses. You can even do the same thing with like a hand lens. Again, if you hold it away from you a bit, the person that's opposite you will be able to see different. So again, that is refraction, refraction. So refraction causes the light to split into the rainbows. We see a lot of rainbows in Fremont. When the light travels through the air and it hits those different um, water molecules that are in the air, that's where it gets bent. Just like it's right here, it's going through this thing called a prism. But it's the same thing as when it goes through the air and the sky and the moisture, then it breaks it down into those colors. So white light, can actually be broken down into all these different colors. All these colors go together and they make white light. So these colors, the way we remember them is Roy G. Biv. So Roy would be red, O would be orange, Y is yellow, G is green, B is blue, and V is violet. All right, so that's the Roy G. Bib. That's an easy way to remember it. All right, we also have a third way that light can travel. So we've had reflection, refraction, diffraction is the third one. And this is when light travels through a small little opening, just opening, and it splits out as soon as it gets through that opening. So if we look at the light coming through this little slit, now we've got all these other dots of light, okay? Same thing here. We have a bunch of light that's going through, but then we make one little hole and look at this pattern. You see how the light is spreads out, diffracts. Even the same thing right here. It has one space that it can go through, but then it gets real wide. You'll even see that if you play with a flashlight, that the flashlights can go through one little area, but then they get 
really big. So these are some of the experiments that you will be doing with your docents, okay? You'll be doing the six different lessons that have to do with some of these properties. And again, this diffraction is all around us. Have you guys ever seen that when the sky looked like this? When you had all these, we called them angel rays that were all over. But look at how it's coming through one point of light, but then it diffracts, it spreads out. This is the back of a CD. I don't know if you guys even remember what a CD is. We used to use these to play music on, but the back, it's kind of like a mirror and it diffracts or bends the light and makes it look like a rainbow. Bubbles. You guys ever played with bubbles? I'm sure you have. Have you noticed all the colors? Can you see the reds, the blues, the greens, the purples? Look at all those different colors. Again, that's the light that is refracting. It's bending. And also the diffraction where it's spreading out. You can almost see in this one. Look. So you can almost see. Look. And, but see how, look how it's all spread out. How about this one? So very cool. Again, bubbles are fun to play with. All right, so that's some of the hardcore part of light. But now let's figure out how our earth moving affects us. So this is some, showing you some of our earth movements in our solar system. Again, we've got the sun in the middle, right? And then all of the rest of our planets are spinning around. But let's look at how they move. One way they move is called revolving. Can you guys say revolving? revolving. That's a big motion. That's when it takes Earth 365 days to go all the way around the sun. That's a big motion. Revolving is a big long word. That's kind of how I remember it. But the other thing our planet is doing at the same time is spinning on its axis. It is rotating. Can you guys say rotate? Rotate. Okay. So this revolving and this rotating, this rotating gives us day and night. This is what makes shadows. There's a lot to it. <laughs> Let's keep going. So if we talk about shadows, have you guys ever played with shadows? What is a shadow? A shadow is a dark area where the light from the light source is blocked. So here we've got our sun, but the tree, when the tree is blocking the sun, it creates our little shadow down here. But see how the shadow is always opposite of the sun. So our shadow is going to change with the different times of day. And it's also going to change with the different seasons. And that's what your long-term experiment is going to be all about. So that means you've got to be an expert on shadows. So if we look at these pictures of what all is going on here with shadows, to make a shadow, you have to have a light source. And then there's like a white card or a white screen, something lighter. And then the shape goes between the light source and the screen. So this is the hard part. Sometimes when we're trying to practice making shadows, we try to put our hand over here, but that's not going to make a shadow. Okay, We have to be in between the light and the wall. All right, so look down here. So there's a flashlight. There's a bright light right here. And you can see it shining on her hands. And she's able to make what looks like a dog. Now look at these kittens over here. So there's a person, I think they're gonna be able to play and catch that hand. Well, they're never gonna be able to catch it because it's just a shadow, but look at how they think it's moving. They don't know or understand shadow, so they jump at it. But this is a person that's standing, there's probably the light back behind them and they're just holding their arm out, making that shadow. Cause see, look, here's this cat's shadow. So that means our sun is back over on this side. So that's kind of funny, some shadows. Now, if you think back to when you were little, wonder what you thought shadows were. They were. Did they scare you or did you like them? So look at this little girl here in the pink. She's walking along and then all of a sudden she realizes that her shadow is following her. And look, she gets scared. She tries to back away and her shadow is still with her. That's because again, the sun's back here and she's blocking the sun. So that's where her shadow comes from. Now look at this little one. This little one's playing. Look, mom or dad are making, oh, they look like they just bit the little baby, but it's just the shadow, but it scares the baby <laughs> and knocks them over. All right. Even we have these dogs playing with their shadows. 
Look at this first one, number one. Look, he's got a great shadow going on this little German Shepherd. See his big ears, his fluffy tail, but he's pouncing and jumping, trying to catch that shadow. He says every time he sees it moving, he just can't figure out how to catch it. Now, this little dog over here is one of my favorites. As he's running, look at what happens to his shadow. You can almost see how it gets bigger and smaller if he gets closer or further away from that light source. So the sun is back behind him and then he's making that shadow. All right, so one of the first things we will look at is how does a shadow change during the day? So I'm gonna be out there in October and I'll do the first experiment with you. We're gonna go out and we're gonna take um, our shadow measurements about three times maybe during a day and we're gonna see what happens. So our sun always rises in the east. So first thing we'll have to figure out is direction. Rises in the east and it sets in the west. Okay, now here we've got a little pole. Now look at what happens with the shadow during the day. Hey. Excuse me. Again, a shadow is made just because the pole is blocking the light. All right, so we, this is kind of one of the first experiments that I will do with you. And I just wanted to show you, this is something that's at the Children's Natural History Museum um, over off of Eggers. We have a big sundial out in front and this is a sundial. Here's the sun is shining down. Here's our little pole and look how it makes a shadow. So this is actually a way that it can help us tell time. So this is almost two o'clock. So again, our shadows can help us tell time. And that's because we are rotating where our planet's spinning, making day and night, and also revolving where it's going around the sun. All right. So again, this is showing you what shadows can tell us. They can tell us all about the time of day. You can see where the sun is shining and then it blocks. And then it can also show us the direction of the light as it moves see how he's making the shadow there the sun bright star or light and the shadow back behind it all right now seasons hopefully you guys remembered your seasons from last year we usually have fall winter spring and summer okay so during these different seasons our sun is going to travel through our sky it's going to rise in the east and set in the west. Rise in the east, set in the west. Look at this. In the peak of summer, this part right here, the sun is real high up, and that, that's the most direct, so that's why it's the hottest in the summer. But look at what happens in the winter time. We have tilted some because of our rotation, our revolution, so we don't get as much of that direct sunlight, so it's a little cooler. But again, we can still tell some time. So again, look at the shadow here. As the sun comes up, what happens to the cat's shadow? Now, is it gonna, here's the summer when the sun is direct overhead, more direct giving us most of our heat. And then again, autumn, this is what we just had a couple days ago, and then in the summer. So during the year, we're going to go out at least once a week. We're gonna set up your little shadow station and you're going to, make a dot and kind of measure where the shadow is. And the end of the year, we'll put it on a big graph and see if it can tell us anything about the seasons. Do the shadows change length? Um, do they get longer or smaller? Okay, and people have been studying the seasons for a long, long time. This is a place in England that's called Stonehenge. And Stonehenge was arranged to be using their shadows. You see the shadows down here? to help them as you work like a calendar, okay, to help them with the seasons. All right, so this is part of your experiment. We're going to get a paper plate. We're gonna get this round disc. We can cut the round disc out and you're just gonna put that in the middle of your plate and we're gonna poke a hole in it. See the little toothpick right in the middle? Okay, then we're gonna find a good place to go, um, probably out, I think you have a grassy area somewhere where there's no other big shadows around because can you make a shadow if you're already in a shadow? No, we have to be out in the open. So we don't wanna be near a shadow, 
be somewhere where it's big and open. So can you tell from this, where is the sun? Because here is my little toothpick. Here's my shadow. That means my sun is over here. Okay, so all we're gonna do is walk out. But the thing is, we're gonna go to the same place and face the same direction every time, all right? So this is the first experiment that I'm gonna do with you. We're gonna walk out. And when we find our certain location, we're gonna make a dot at the end of the shadow. See how this green dot is right at the end of that shadow? All right, we're gonna take the temperature, or not the temperature, the shadow at length at least three or four times during the day. So look at this one. This one is one I did for September 6th. And look, you see one dot, two dots, three dots. What happened to my shadows? They got longer as the day went. Okay, we'll see. So when I'm done, I'm gonna put my little shadow data in my little folder here, and then I'm gonna come back and use it again every week. We're gonna, so we'll end up with a disc that has all these little dots on it, all right? Now, all these little lines are already made for measurements, but if you wanna get a ruler out and you can measure how long your shadow is as well, you can measure that or you can just use this. So if we look at this shadow right here, there's a little bit past the first line, but here's line number two. It's not quite to line two. So I would call this probably one and a half. Maybe we call it 1.5. Okay, that's up to each of you as classes. We'll figure out. Maybe it'll be just a simple rounding up. It's past one, so we'll call it one for the beginning of the year. And then we can add more measurements to it later. All right, so again, this is your recording data um, with our shadow grid. Again, the lines are already there for you to help you with your measurements. All we're going to do is again, poke a little hole in the middle. We have our little toothpick on our plate and we're gonna be able to go and get our shadow. All right, we're going to check and see if it changes during the day and then if it changes throughout the year. All right, that is all we're going to do. And again, I'll be out there in October and I'll do the first experiment with you guys. So this is kind of what your plate ends up looking like. Phoebe was showing me how to do this too. Look at her plate, how it's got one, two, three, four measurements on it already. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to end up doing. So in your long-term project, you're going to learn all about light, shadows and seasons. Okay, I'm going to stop my share so I can see everybody again. All right, so did that make any sense? <laughs> okay, do you have anybody in your classes that has any questions for me? The main thing I want you guys to do right now is just start paying attention to your shadow. See if you can make a shadow outside when you're standing in line, getting ready to go eat lunch or something. Where do you make a shadow? Do your friends make shadows? Start looking around and noticing how that light moves.